God is so very good. Those joining us online today, may the Lord bless you as well. Uh, ngayong araw po, uh, we want to encourage everyone to open your heart. We are in a beautiful season, as Pastor Leia said. We just finished our 21-day prayer and fasting season. Of course, if you're not yet finished or you want to extend, please carry on, okay? And uh, and then yung mga nag-fasting naman, pwede tayo bumawi ng kode, kain ng masarap, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just want to encourage everyone as we begin uh, this message, so as we transition into it, I just want to encourage all of us, no, yung first foot prayer and fasting, the beginning of the year you give to God, and even the first foot giving, they do not, uh, they do not replace obedience, faith, and uh, right living. Ibig sabihin, if we want this year to be blessed, grabe, naka, naka, ano, nakabuelo na tayo. Praise God. Alam niyo ba yung prayer and fasting? Grabe kay precious kay Lord yan. May buelo ka na. But uh, what I feel that the Lord just want to say is, don't get lazy. Don't get irresponsible. Don't get weird. Don't get anything. So, the remainder of the year, pagpatuli mo yung heart of seeking God, be responsible, do what's right, okay? Keep believing God and then declare po- positive things, life into your seeds, okay? Because you know, ating, ating pagsunod kay Lord, paggawa ng kalawaban ni Lord are still important. Kahit nag-prayer and fasting pa tayo, nag-fursuit pa tayo, kung along the way, we, become, we begin to compromise, we begin to be stubborn, we begin to be lazy or whatever, then pwede hindi rin tayo mag-break this year the way we want and the way God wants us to break through. So, keep doing your part, but thank God and be excited because nakapagsimula ka na ng maganda. Tuloy-tuloy mo yan. Great things are ahead this year. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Palapakan natin si God. Now, in relation to uh, the season, I feel that although the prayer and fasting season is formally, at least for most of us, over, I feel that the Lord wants to uh, remind you and me and invite you and me to keep moving forward and go deeper in prayer. I really believe that for some of us, uh, meron dapat na paglalim sa pag-prayer na gusto ni Lord na mangyari. At hindi lang some of us, most likely all of us, Myself included, okay? So today, meron tayong pag-uusapan about prayer na sana ay maging uh, helpful sa atin and I'm sure mababago ang buhay natin as we, um, as we act on what God is saying, okay? So the message of the Lord today is entitled, Prayer That Produces Spiritual Transformation. Prayer That Produces Spiritual Transformation. Bakit, Pastor, meron bang prayer na hindi nagpo-produce ng spiritual transformation? Yes, obviously. Di ba nagkag mga tao na religious sila and religiously active sila, pero ang kinaiyan nila, <laughs> di ni kayo maayo. No? I remember some time ago, meron parang, parang, parang pinaparinggan niya ako na ay, yung mga tao maggabi magpray pray pero pangit ang ugali. So, I'm not aware na gets ko ako yun. <laughs> so, sabi ko, okay, siguro baka nga totoo, baka nga kailangan may gawin din ako, etc. Okay? But totoo yun, marami sa atin, maraming tao, religious tayo, uh, prayerful tayo in the sense that you spend time to pray, pero ang ugali natin, the way tayo mag-relate sa iba, ang ating ministry, may pagka-ungodly, etc. So, hindi ho automatic na porque we go to the motions of prayer, Hey, uh, we are being transformed. Baka we get answers here and there. Kasi siyempre, pag imingi ka, God in His mercy and grace gives the man. So, bumapasa ka sa mga klase mo, na-promote ka sa trabaho mo, yung nag-expand yung negosyo mo, pwede naman yun. Pero ikaw, ano nangyari sa you to the actions of prayer? Na bago ka ba? O pareho pa rin ang ugali. So, sana po, yung prayer na i-develop natin is yung prayer na nagbabago ng buhay. Amen? Sino gusto ng ganon? Ah, kayong iba, nag-iisip pa sila kung gusto nila yan o hindi. Joke lang. Alright. Anyway, prayer changes things is good. But prayer changes me is better. Yan. So, hindi lang yan, oy, ta- ay, nakapasa ako, praise God. Oy, nakuha ko na yung trabaho ang gusto ko. Oy, nabili ko na yung gusto ko. Oy, naka-upgrade na ako ng sasakyan. Prayer changes things. Nag-i-improve yung mga bagay-bagay. Pero ako, 
naging probago ako <laughs> pareho pa rin ng dati. You know? And real talk lang, real talk lang. Pwede ka talaga kasing maging religiously active, pero dahil your, your activities are more intended maybe to get blessing and to accomplish this or that, but not yung inner transformation, pero hindi ka mabago. Things are changing, but you, you're not changing. But ngayon, we will study uh, how we can continue to change while we are in the process of praying and seeking God and asking from God. Amen? Amen. All right. I'd like to acknowledge that in this message, I'm using many, many of the ideas of Edmund Chan. So, dami kong ginagamit. But many of the things you'll see on the slides are his exact words or almost exact words. Okay? Pero siya ba, meeting din ako ng mga Bible verses and other things. Okay? As we allow the Holy Spirit to bring us deeper in prayer, may we allow Him to change us through the process of prayer. So, yun po ang gusto ni Lord, mabago tayo while we are in the process of prayer. Pero mas sabihin ka tayo, gusto ni Lord, mabago ka. Amen. That's the greatest blessing of all, na mabago tayo. Yun din ang pinakamahirap na mangyari. <laughs> yung mga little blessings here and there. Pwede yan, pero yung nabago tayo, yan ang tunay na miracle. No? But anyway, let's look at an example from the Old Testament, Exodus 34, 29 to 30. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Ano yung talking with God? Prayer. So nagpray siya. At ano nangyari? Nabago siya kahit yung itsura niya. Grabe yung glory niya, no? And then continuing verse 30, Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. So hindi yung belo, hindi yung gluta, hindi yung kung ano, pero grabe yung glory niya. Okay? Saan mo niyo, may ilisiro kayo ng artista or whatever, na kung uh, uh, one time nakasakay namin si Charlene Gonzalez at that time sa, sa aeroplano, Many years ago, for the older people who don't know her, she became like the Philippine Miss Universe na naging, naging candidate sa Miss Universe, okay? So, yun, for example, yung gano'n, makita mo talagang they really look, iba yung gloria nila, okay? Pero ito kay Moses, mas grabe ito, no? Talagang kumikintab-kintab talaga, kumukutikotitap, o ano bang tamang Tagalog term dyan, no? Now, this story in Exodus 34 is actually referred to in a passage in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 onwards, and uh, even the previous verses. This says, uh, verse 17, The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is present, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, reflecting the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, which is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So, nababago tayo, natatransform tayo as we behold God. And prayer is beholding God, and you're being changed in the process. Yun ang gusto natin. Hindi ang dami natin sinabi, siguro marami natin tayo as is the prayer, pero ang ugali natin, or ang ating character or godliness, Kulang, okay? So, mer merong prayers that produce transformation in people, meron ding hindi. So, let's try to know or be reminded of yung hindi para mabago natin at yung nakakatulong mabago tayo para magawa natin. Okay pa ba yan? Okay, alright. Sige, so, let's talk about prayers that don't produce deep and lasting transformation in people. Okay, so ito yung mga kahit ginagawa-gawa mo dahil yung prayer approach, yung prayer motivation, etc. ay hindi talaga yung will ni Lord. So ang resulta, uh, dili kahit na bago. Okay, so let's talk about some of them. Number one, praying as if I know prayer very well. Okay, kanang ko mag-ampo ta, mag-ampo ta na mag feeling hawod kahit na mag -ampo. Now, when we pray, yeah, we may still pray seriously. We may still pray, you know, passionately. But there's a sense in which there's a little bit of pride, familiarity. There's a little bit of, yeah, alam ko na ito, ganito ito. And if I do this, I know I'll get that, etc. So, merong sense na parang familiar and proud tayo sa process. Alam niyo po, when we pray, as if we know prayer very well, parang experts tayo, ay hindi ho yan maganda. Okay? Marami nagre-remind sa atin sa field ng consultancy, life coaching, uh, and even business advice na 
Don't act like you're a professional. The best approach always is to act like you're an amateur. Because you'll probably give your best, you'll probably be careful, you'll probably be more pleasant because masambol ba nang dating sa mga tao? Okay, di ako feeling hawod kayo ka. Amor, you tend to talk down to people. So yun mga reminder ng mga maraming tao sa atin. And in prayer, certainly, importanteng importante yan, no? So we need to have that attitude, okay? One time there was a mother who was working and she left her little boy with a caregiver. And however, she received a call from the caregiver saying, your son is sick. And so the mother left her job and on the way home, dropped by a pharmacy to buy some medicine. Pagbalik niya sa, sa kotse, to her horror, nasarado niya ang kotse, naiwan sa loob ang, ang susi. Tinawagan niya ngayon yung caregiver. Sabi niya, kumusta anak ko? Sabi niya, She's get, he, your, your little boy is getting worse. He's getting worse. So, gawin mo ng para, anong gawin ko? Sabi niya, hanap ka na. Baka may hunger dyan. Yung mga hunger na meron pang mga wire. <laughs> okay? Baka meron, nakahalap nga siya. Pero hindi niya alam pa paano gawin. Nag-pray siya, Lord, help me, God, I need you. Ma'am, in, in a very short while, may tuma, tumabi, tumabi o oh, nag-park malapit sa kanya na medyo bulok-bulok na sasakyan. Yagit ang itsura ng lalaki. Sabi niya, Sir, can you please help me? What's the problem? Sabi niya, I left my, car in, uh, my key inside the car. Can you please help me? And the man smiled and said, Sure. And then in less than one minute, nabuksan na kaagad ng kotse. Sabi niya, thank you, sir. You're a very good man. Sabi niya, I'm not a good man. In fact, I just got out of prison. Sabi niya, for stealing cars. <laughs> Sabi niya, tapos niyakap siya nung nanay. Sabi niya, thank you, thank you, God, for giving me a professional. <laughs> professional kawatan. Okay. But, sa prayer, walang professional. Huwag talaga tayo mga post na parang tayong iyabang na din kay Lord. Alam natin anong dapat sabihin, gawin. Ayaw ni Lord, your humility is uh, an asset. Pride is a disadvantage. So, let's be humble in prayer. Amen? Tell someone, let's be humble in prayer. Amen. There are neither experts nor professionals in the supernatural realm of prayer. Okay, number two, treating prayer as if it's a quick, magical solution to our problems. Yung prayer, parang magic ba? Parang quick lang na, uh, you know, you're just trying, parang manipulate things, you're in control, and you need this, boom! You need that, boom! Kuha mo lang. Hindi gusto ni Lord na gano'n ang ating approach sa prayer. Walang relationship, walang masyadong respect for God, and so on. May isang bata, sabi na nanay niya, uh, punta ka sa likod, kunin mo yung walis. And, 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 uh, and uh, the boy said, I'm afraid, mama, it's dark. Sabi niya, no, Jesus will be with you, don't worry. And the mother, Stan was looking at the mother, are you sure Jesus will be with me? Yes, Jesus will be with you, he'll protect you. So the son the, you know, the was still afraid and the, he, she, he opened the door a little bit and, he, and, uh, and shouted, sabi niya, Jesus, kung nakakaniha, pala yung ito na lang walis me. <laughs> okay. So sa iya ha, parang there's an element na, so sa pagkabata niya naman siguro, pero the point is, for many of us, we, we, that's how we approach God. Okay? One of the major misconceptions about prayer is to do it as a means of summoning the genie in the bottle. Yung genie in the bottle, di ba? Yung, you know, ding! Gusto maging prinsipe ka, maging prinsesa ka, maging whatever. Magic ba? Magic, no? Parang ganon, si, si God parang ginautusan natin itong gawin natin. Gusto ko ng promotion, gusto ko makaasawa, etc. Ito ay yun ang mga ano. There is nothing wrong with talking to God about career advancement, marriage or healing. However, the greatest problem lies in an unbiblical reversal. We approach Jesus as a genie in a bottle, parang inuutusan natin, to meet our needs rather than as the Lord of our allegiance who wants to transform our lives. Kasi sa prayer po, prayer is it's just a means to an end. The glory of God is the primary end are getting closer to God is very, very important. So, yun po hindi dapat nawawala. Yung magical solution, parang ginagamit na natin, inuutusan na natin. Walang nadidevelop na and na intimacy with God doon. Okay? And wala yung submission to God. As long as we refuse to submit fully to the Lordship of Christ, nothing happens. Oh, when we do, the angels are hushed, heaven is open, and our lives are changed forever. In Acts 8, 17 to 21, may kwento po doon, basahin natin. Then Peter and John placed their hands on the Samaritans and we received the Holy Spirit. Now Simon, the magician, when he saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money saying, 
give me this power too so that I can so that everyone I place my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could acquire God's gift with money. You have no share or part in this matter because your heart is not right before God. So kung yung puso natin hindi tama, parang magic lang ang gusto natin, hindi yun will ni Lord. Hindi yun ang tamang paraan. Pwede minsan-minsan makakuha tayo ng miracle, breakthrough, mga ganon, pero hindi na bago ang buhay natin. So hindi yun ang will ni Lord. Amen. Pangatlo, third way of uh, praying that, that, that will not transform us uh, is using prayer as a crutch. Using prayer as a crutch. Okay? So yung prayer, ginawa din crutch. Alam mo, may mga tao, when they pray, parang it shows more unbelief or fear than faith. Nasasatakyan kayo, tapos, you know, medyo slide-slide ang kalsada, umuulan pa, madilim. Tapos, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, so, so mag-pray siya, so parang isip mo, teka, nag-pray ka ba kayo, may tiwala kayo? <laughs> oh, 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 takot ka. Now, we know some people are emotionally a little bit more kwan, expressive, pero the point is, we pray because we believe, not because we pray because we are worried, okay? Uh, one time, <laughs> isang true story po ito, isang medyo mahihain na babae, gusto yung sumali sa visitation program ng church nila. Meron kasi lang gano'n na may mga tao, ang kadalang ministry, magbisita sa mga may sakit, may mga gano'n. So, ang nangyari is, uh, sabi niya, uh, gusto niya mag-volunteer, pero medyo uh, takot siya or nahiya siya. So, sabi ng pastor, no, the Lord is with you. Just pray before you go. The Lord will help you. Don't worry, okay? So the woman was felt exa- uh, well, felt encouraged. And then after some time, maybe a week or two, I don't know, but after some time, the pastor saw the woman and she was smiling and happy. So when your pastor, prayer works. Why? Before I go, I pray that when I visit, they will not be there. And when they arrive, they're not there. <laughs> I had to have a visitation. But I pray, you know, wala ang tao pagkapunta dito kay Hadlok siya, ulawon kayo siya, no? So prayer as a cross, parang, parang corny, di ba? Parang napaka-illogical. But anyway, prayer is not a crutch. The most important thing is not that we pray. The most important thing is how we pray. Are we praying in fear or in faith? Some Christians almost superstitiously feel that if they do not pray, something bad will happen. They enter the realm of prayer as a crutch. We should not just seek God out of convenience or compulsion, but out of inner commitment and conviction. Okay? So okay po yung mag-pray, pero sana hindi siya parang crutch lang. Talagang we really believe in God, we really ask something from God, and we want to grow in our relationship with God. Amen? Amen. All right. next is seeing prayer as a chore. Seeing prayer as a chore. Parang responsibilidad lang, burden lang, etc. And for many of us, honestly, yan ang ating approach. At least after the first uh, 10 minutes of prayer. Maybe yung first 10 minutes, okay pa tayo. <laughs> after 10 minutes, kailangan ba talaga ito ka ba? Mag-pray. Kailangan ba talaga na pati yan ipag-pray pa? Parang gano'n, no? We fail to see that prayer is not a burden but a blessing. Not just a discipline but a delight. Not just because we have to but because we want to. You know, ang sana ma-discover or ma-rediscover natin. And, and as I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself, okay? Sana po yung prayer talagang ma-enjoy natin siya. Hindi siya maging burden lang, napilitan lang, uh, etc. Ako, sometimes I feel that way too, okay? Sometimes I pray, read the Bible, say, do I really need to pray this long? Or read all of this and so on. But the Lord reminds us that those things are very important and very helpful. Prayer is neither a crutch nor a chore, but a communion with a God who must be loved as the delight of the human soul. Love for who He is, not merely for meeting our needs. So yun pong prayer is spending time with God, communing with God. Parang yung best friend mo, kausap mo, enjoy kayo nag-uusap. Yan po ang prayer, hindi obligasyon lang. Pagkasabi sa tabi mo, hindi obligasyon lang. Amen. Next is praying without a right heart attitude. Okay? Kailangan ho ng tamang heart attitude. Ano yung mga maling reasons uh, pag-pray? Uh, may wrong attitude. James chapter 4, not in the PowerPoint, but it says, you ask 
uh, so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You ask so you will compete with others or prove something. Minsan kasi na-promote na yung isang tao, naingi tayo. Lord, ako din, oh, promote din ako. Okay, or naka, nakabili siya ng bangong kotse. Ako din, Lord. Okay, or may uyam na siya. Ako din, Lord. <laughs> Whatever, nakasawa lang siya. Ako din, Lord. Minsan, ang ato ako, ano ba? It's selfish. It's pride. It's self. I want this because kawawa naman ako. Maiwan na lang ako parati. Sila na lang parati ang nauuna, etc. So when we have a wrong attitude, when we don't have a right heart attitude, then our, our, our prayers uh, do not produce transformation. So ang sad po doon, ang tragic po doon is, yes, nakuha tayo ng konting blessing dyan, konting blessing dito, pero hindi tayo nabago. Eh, what's the point? Yung family natin, nagreklamo pa rin sa atin, kapangit ang ugali natin. Kung pwede, mabago rin tayo by the grace of God. Amen? And by the way, sa ministry, ang importante ho is not how you begin, but how you carry on and how you end. Okay? Because you can really begin with so many people, madala mo kay Lord, pero pag may character problems tayo, may mga mali sa ugali, paraan natin, etc., mawawala yung mga taong yun. So we end up with nothing. We begin with nothing, end up with nothing. Not because we did not try to do something, but because yung character natin hindi masyado nabago. Kaya ang blessing talaga ultimately ng prayer is nabago tayo. And everyone said, Amen. Merong tatlong pastor, nag-uusap sila about ano yung best na posture sa prayer. Sabi ng isa, ang the best talaga is yung nakataas ang kamay mo, nakatayo ka. And ganon, Lord, help me God. Lord, ganon. So, so, ay, hindi yan ang maganda. Ang maganda, luhod. It shows humility. Luhod talaga. So, so, ay, hindi, mas maganda dyan. Dapa! Dapa talaga. Yan talaga ang humility. I am nothing, Lord. You're the great one. Please bless me. While you're talking, merong nagre-repair. Repair man sa bahay. Sabi niya, pasensya na kayo. I'm sorry, I, I cannot help but overhear your conversation. Conversation sabi niya, I don't know much about prayer, but to me, the best posture is praying, uh, hanging hanging down. Yung nakabaliktad ka ba, ang paa niya sa taas, ang ulo niya sa baba. Sabi niya, ano klaseng prayer yan? Sabi niya, kasi one time, nag-repair ako, tapos nahulog ako, tapos nabigtay ako yung paa ko sa taas, sa ulo ko sa baba, tapos alam ko, mapuputol na yung ano, yung tali. Sabi niya, Lord, help me, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. And the Lord saved me. Kaya sabi niya, yan ang the best na posture mong prayer. <laughs> okay. Wag niya sa gaya mo kay maniwala sa kanya joke lang. Pero I think ang point doon is not the posture but the attitude of the heart or posture of the heart, that physical posture. Hindi talaga talagang yung pagpay na yun walang laro-laro doon. Seryoso talaga yun. Kasi minsan tayo kaya tayo real talk lang. Why are we not receiving answers to prayer? Especially yung mga mas substantive na mga bagay. Mabago tayo, mabago pamilya natin, maglaki ang ministry natin. Kasi in reality, we don't want it that desperately. Kung madumami ang disciples, praise God kung wala. Nung magawa ko, mabago ako, praise God kung hindi. Eh, siguro ganito talaga ako. Mabago ang pamilya ko, masave sila, uh, praise God. Pero kung hindi, anong magawa ko? Alang pilitin ko sila. Ako pang kontrabida ngayon. Eh, ganun kasi tayo, kaya walang nangyayari. Pero kung desperado ka talaga, Lord, I need you, God. Lord, please, I need you. Ah, yun, may answer doon. Amen? And hindi lang yung breakthrough na hiningi, kundi nababago ang buhay natin. So, yun ang gawin natin. The best posture of prayer is the posture of the heart. Yan po ang ating uh, tandaan. Matthew 6, 7, Jesus said, When you pray, do not bubble repetitiously like the Gentiles. Because they think that they will be heard because of their, uh, they will, that their many words uh, will result to them being heard. So, yun po ang reminder doon na hindi yung pro, yung salita-salita lang, walang masama na ulitin. Pero kung akala natin yun ang paraan para marinig, you know, hindi po yan. Ang importante po, the attitude of the heart. Amen? Sometimes di kailangan sobrang daming sabihin, pero dahil ang heart tama, answer ka agad, breakthrough agad. Amen? And then next is praying hurriedly. Praying hurriedly. Nagmamadali. This is, I think, very, very important. Okay? Maraming prayers, either hindi nasasagot o nasasagot siya, pero hindi tayo nababago in the process kasi masyado tayong nagmamadali. We're not being changed. And God wants us to be changed, 
transformed from glory to glory in 2 Corinthians 3, as we behold Him, as we look at God and spend time with God, na hindi nagmamadali. Okay? Kwento ni Edmund Chan, man time nasa Subia, po market siya sa Perth, Australia, may nakita siyang isang display cloth may nakalagay prayer for tourists. Ma- masaya itong salita, pero may mga lessons dito. So ito yung nakalagay sa prayer for tourists. Heavenly Father, look down on your humble, obedient tourist servants who are doomed to travel this earth taking photographs, mailing postcards, buying souvenirs. Give us this day divine guidance in the selection of our hotel that we may find our reservations honored, our room made up, and hot water running from our faucets. We pray that the telephone works and that the operators can speak our languages. Lead us, dear Lord, to good and inexpensive restaurants where the food is superb, the waiters are friendly, the wine included in the price. Give us wisdom to tip correctly in the currencies we do not understand. Forgive us for under-tipping out of ignorance, over-tipping out of fear. May the locals love us not for, for, what we, for what we are and not for what we can give to them financially. Grant us the strength to visit the museum, the parks, the government buildings, and all the must in the guidebook. And if perchance we skip a historic moment to grab a sleep after lunch, have mercy on us for our flesh is weak. Tapos nakalagay, P.S. for husbands only. Dear God, keep our wives from shopping sprees and protect them from bargains that they don't need or can't afford. Lead them not into temptation for they know not what they do. For wives only. Oh, mighty Father, keep our husbands from looking at foreign women and comparing them to us. Save them from making fools of themselves in cafes and nightclubs. Above all, do not forgive them for their trespasses, for they know exactly what they do. <laughs> okay. Pero dito, makita mo, yung idea ng tourist. Kasi pag nagtutur tayo, anong ginagawa natin? Walay tayo tulog-tulog. Tapos whenever we go, pas-pas kayo diri. Kasi ang goal ni mo is, maingon ni mo, nadoan ako na. Nakapicture ko niya. Nakakaon na ko itong, hindi na ko pwede umuguli kung wala kakakaon na to. Whatever yung mga ganon, okay? Uh, and we miss on the, on, the, on, the, on the substance and the deeper enjoyment. Uh, the frantic tourist is a parable of life. It's a parable of prayer. He reflects little on his journey, thus he understands little of it. Similarly, many people hurry through prayer but reflect little on it. They see but they do not perceive. They observe but do not understand. They hurry through prayer as if the destination is more important than the journey. They are compulsively driven to complete a task rather than to enjoy the presence of God. They pray driven prayers rather than devout prayers. Vital devotion and piety are painfully absent from these driven prayers. So, kita, destination lang atong pinmigin ang sudyan. Mohaman ako, makaamin ako, matubag na ni, okay na ako. Wala ito gina-enjoy ang process which is spending time with God. Gadali ta permanente. And usahay dili, because nagyo tayo grabe kay importante dapat at imanon, usahay, it's just because, you know, we are so distracted. Nalingaw ta kayo sa TikTok, sa atong Instagram. So kung asa pa nga, wala tayo time to pray quality uh, prayers. There is no greater disaster in the spiritual life than that of a soul untutored or untaught in prayer and piety. There is a lack of a deliberate, intentional waiting on God with the aim of growing deep in Him. In a previous generation, people captured the joy of a sweet hour of prayer, but today they settle for a word of prayer. In fact, where people like me in my 50s uh, who, who went through yung mga conservative churches, some of you know the hymn, for example, Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Kasi yung mag-pray ng isang oras, normal yan noon sa mga tao. Ngayon, ay marami naman tayo masyadong ginakalingawan. <laughs> Word of prayer na lang, Lord, please, two minutes, humahal na ta. Okay, wala tayo time, kadali ta, pirmi. Okay, that's not good. We will not, we, may not, we will not be changed in the process. To grow deeper in prayer, we must not be in a hurry. This is exactly the radical reorientation we need in our prayer life. Staying long or tiring in the presence of God and growing deep in Him. So sana po, ngayong 2024, 
mabago po ang prayer life natin. And one of those areas that need to change is, hindi na tayo nagmamadali. Pero ang sabihin ng katabi mo, huwag ka masyadong magmadali. Amen. Huwag ka masyadong spend time with God. Now, there is another concern with prayer, and it has to do na shorter lang kasi we equate singing with prayer. In fact, one of the, I can honestly say from the very beginning that na, naturo sa atin yung soaking worship, ito yung isang concern ko. I'm not saying it's wrong. All I'm saying, it has to be managed well. Okay? So anyway, some Christians today have mistakenly substituted singing for praying because they equate singing to the Lord with praying. While there is a legitimate place for worship, in our prayer time, we must not yield to the temptation of singing for praying. Otherwise, we may enlarge our capacity for singing without increasing our propensity to pray. Kaya yung soaking worship po, importante, tuloy nyo yan. I'm not saying stop that. All I'm saying is, in your normal morning, don't just read ilang chapters ng Bible, play two or three songs, say, oh Lord, bless me today, blah, 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 two minutes, tapos akala mo dahil lahat yun, 40 minutes na, quality na yung time mo kay God. What I'm saying is, iba yung nagakanta ka, iba din yung nagastorya ka giyod kay Lord. When you read the Bible, you're listening to God, to the Holy Spirit, to the Word of God, God's talking to you. When you pray, you're talking to God. In fact, what I do, since limited ba din ang time ko, etc., usually yung kanta-kanta, doon na yun sa, sa mga, yun, sabay na lang sa ibang ginagawa ko. Habang naliligo, habang nag-drive, habang kumakain, kung wala ko kasama kumain, yun na lang yun. Para yung talagang time na nakaupo ako, Bible and prayer lang yun. Amen? In fact, yung prayer, pwede nga din yung dalin sa habang nag, ano ka, nag, may nagkukuri-kuri ka, nagalaba ka, naghugas ka, Lord, thank you, God, etc. Ayun lang, ipakita siya mong silingan na kay masigawalis ka. <laughs> Weird duman niya ang silingan na. Yung normal ka lang. Pero the point is, pray, and not just songs, not just soaking, but prayer. Amen? Kasi naman, hindi lang soaking, prayer din, prayer din. Pakisabihan siya. Amen. For indeed, in the words of Clement of Alexandria, prayer is keeping company with God and it is in such a joyous communion that we keep growing deep in Him. So prayer, parang sinasamahan mo si Lord. Nagkahang out kayo ni Lord. Para kayong makaibigan doon kayo sa coffee shop, sa milk tea shop, or whatever. Okay? Uh, and then, nagkausap kayo, nagkaspend time kayo, yun po ang prayer. Yun yung prayer na nagbabago sa loob natin, okay? So those negative things, let's try to avoid them by the grace of God and, it, uh, and let's pursue the things na nagbabago ng buhay. So let's go to the second part, the, the shorter part, how prayer transforms me. Paano ako binabago ng prayer, okay? How prayer transforms me. Number one, prayer transforms me by giving me the power to do what God wants me to do, Okay? So yung prayer transforms us because it gives us the power to do what God wants us to do. What does God want us to do? God wants us to spend time with Him. God wants us to obey Him. God wants us to tell others about Him. God wants us to stop our compromise. God wants us to distance from people. La bad influence atin. God wants us to you know, invest our lives uh, for, the, for the purposes of God. So when we pray, we receive power. We receive power. Uh, para yung buhay natin ay maging malakas, magawa natin ng kalooban ni Lord. Okay? In 1990, the NASA, the US uh, NASA, sent a uh, very expensive uh, satellites uh, to uh, explore or study the planet Venus. It was codenamed Magellan. That's the name of the satellite. Uh, however, in four years' time, naubusan na siya ng battery. So it had circled Venus 15,000 times taking photographs, sending them back to the earth. Naubusan na siya ng, kwanso, ng battery. So, useless na siya. They, NASA sent it back to the earth and then when it enters the atmosphere, so sobrang init, nasunog na lang siya. Okay? Pero why did they have to kind of condemn such an expensive $900 million satellite? Because it had lost its power. And without power, it's useless. Kahit na high-tech pa siya, wala siyang power. Okay? Sa buhay po natin, ganun din po tayo. Without power, useless ang buhay natin. Prayer is the means God gives us to receive His power. Kaya marami sa atin, so ba tayo ka irritable? We're so irritable. We're so impatient. We're easily angry. We're easily tempted. Why? Because we don't have power. 
Because we don't pray. Or shortcut lahat ng prayer natin. The Lord wants you and me to pray so we will have power. Tell someone, pray so you will have power. Amen. That's the will of God. Without the power of God, all the efforts of man are in vain. In these last days, we need the power of God more than ever before. Prayer unleashes the power of God. Someone has said it well. When we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. And when we understand prayer, we see our foolishness. Grabe tayo mag-worry, mag-ipag-away, mag-run, maningkamot, mag-discarte, etc. Tala na nasurihan na ito except si Lord. Grabe yun, no? And then we're, 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 we're wondering why we're so stressed out. Siyempre, because deep down, inside, we know we're on the human level. Pero alam mo, pag nasa divine level ka, si Lord ang tumutulong sa'yo. Ibang level talaga yon. So, let's pray, pray, pray so we have the power of God. Oswald Chambers said, prayer does not equip us for greater works. Prayer is the greatest work. And also, we're reminded, the highest calling of Christian leaders is the ministry of prayer. A spiritual leader who is not praying has abdicated its primary job description from God. Prayer cannot be divorced from spiritual leadership. In fact, concerning prayer and spiritual leadership, the godly Oswald Sanders goes even further to say, in nothing should the leader be ahead of his followers more than in the realm of prayer. Gusto mo maging tunay na spiritual leader? Kailangan advance tayo sa ating mga followers sa prayer. Dili sila ang, dili kita ang kasunod sila, kita ang gauna. And kung pwede i-develop yun natin siya, prayer, prayer, prayer. It's the will of God. In the matter of spiritual leadership, the apostles of Christ understood their apostolic priorities. They said, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Acts 6.4, it is spiritually instructed that prayer precedes the ministry of the Word. So, sabi na, we will devote ourselves, una, prayer, pangalawa, preaching of the Word. And many times, baliktad tayo. Ubus na tayo natin mag-study, mag-whatever, kulang tayo ng pray. Yan ang problema natin. So, by the grace of God, baguhin natin yan. Amen? Pero mas naman katabi mo, by the grace of God, baguhin natin yan. Amen. A spiritual leader who is not praying has abdicated his primary job description from God. Prayer cannot be divorced from spiritual leadership. Being precedes doing. Prayer precedes preaching. There is an Old Testament example of this priority. The prophet Samuel said, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in the good and right way. 1 Peter 12.23 Ano na una? Prayer and then instruction. Intercession or prayer precedes instruction. And yet so many of us, di natin masyadong ginagawa yun. And it applies to me, it applies to all of us na meron tayong dapat i-improve dito. Prayer is the greatest resource of the church in its classic work, Why Revival Tarries, Leonard Ravenhill Pandy's Staring Words. No man is greater than his prayer life. The pastor who is not praying is playing the people who are not praying are straying. The pulpit cannot be a shop window to display one's talents. The prayer closet allows no showing off. Poverty stricken as the church is today in many things, she is most stricken here in the place of prayer. We have many organizers but few agonizers. Many players and payers, few prayers. Many singers, few clingers. Lots of pastors, few prayer wrestlers. Many fears, few tears. Much fashion, little passion. Many interpreters, uh, few intercessors, many writers, but few fighters. Failing here, we fail everywhere. And so sana po, with all of those reminders, sa tulong ni Lord, with zeal for God, and by the grace of God, i-improve natin ang ating prayer life. Amen? Amen? Pwede mo sabihin katabi mo, improve natin prayer life natin. Amen. All right, number two, prayer that transforms me. Uh, prayer transforms me by bringing me close to God. Prayer transforms me by bringing me close to God. So, yung prayer po, binabago tayo dahil napapalapit tayo kay Lord. And yun po ang isang napaka-importante po. Okay? That prayer does not just get this answer and that answer, solve this problem, solve that problem, but prayer actually changes us, bringing, bringing us closer to the Lord. Meron concept po na gusto natin pag-aralan ba? Complicated pakinggan, pero napaka-simple kung intindihin. It's called ontological inversion. Anyway, ontological is a term in theological jargon referring to that which pertains to 
personal or essential being, yung pagkaikaw mo. When God created man, He created us essentially as spiritual beings. This is our ontological distinctiveness, our distinct personal that sets us apart from the animal kingdom. We were oriented first as spiritual beings. Say spiritual. Then as physical beings. While it is true that we relate to the physical world as physical beings, our primary consciousness is in, in our essential makeup as spiritual beings. However, at the fall of man, because of sin in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve, there was an ontological inversion nabali, that took place. We are now reversed in our identity. We see ourselves as physical beings rather than spiritual beings. And, and we have been extensionally, extensionally warped in this faulty orientation. Nabog taba na, naliso ang daga, no? God made us as spiritual beings first and essentially and only secondarily as, as uh, physical beings. Pero because of sin and the fall, nabali, abi na to, physical beings na primarily and only secondarily spiritual beings. As material beings, our appetite for spiritual things is radically di diminished. Mali naman na atong, atong uh, mindset and atong sulod. Our dependence of God is it's radically, radically compromised. We become deludedly self-sufficient, egocentric, and spiritually blind. We walk around with a false sense of security and superiority. We stop praying. In fact, I, I challenge you to reflect on your life and the lives of many others. This is certainly true of me, and as far as I know, it's true of so many people. Okay? But I hindi not pray kasi feeling natin hindi na matin kailangan talaga magpray. Bakit ang prayer natin shortcut lang kasi hindi makailangan ng mahaba. Kaya man natin. Okay man tayo. Yan po ang problema kasi akala natin physical being so is spiritual. Akala natin kaya natin hindi naman pala. Prayer is theologically significant not for what it can do for us but for what it can bring us back to. Prayer brings us back to a dependence on God. Yun po ang importante sa prayer. Nababalik tayo kay Lord. Kailangan natin si Lord. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. Kung alam natin yung totoong identity natin, we're spiritual beings. We're in need of God. Then we will pray more and more. Uh, until we're desperate that we have nothing, prayer is merely incidental or at best supplemental in our lives, but it will never be fundamental or foundational or essential. As long as we think we have the answer, the education, the power, or the resources, we do not know prayer. As long as we allow the crippling effects of ontological inversion to lull us into a false sense of security and fulfillment, we can never taste the pure refreshing streams of God. Until we know that this world is not our home, we will not grow deep in prayer because we do not know our home in God. Our soul is parched or dried up until we cry out in the midst of our earthly abundance and toys, Lord, I have nothing. This holy desperation taps into the eternal resources of the God who has everything. For prayer is all about coming home to God. Ang prayer po ay gusto ni Lord maging paraan ng babalik tayo sa Kanya. At once nakabalik tayo sa Kanya, hindi tayo alis. We live in God. Di ba sabi ng Bible? In Him we live and move and have our being. Acts 17. It's not in the PowerPoint, but it's a good reminder. Prayer, therefore, is not using God, but finding God. It is not using God to get what we want, but finding God and delighting in who He is so that our temporal desires, even our ministry desires, are tutored by our heavenly delight. You see, prayer refines our spiritual appetite rather than merely satisfying our spiritual appetite Prayer actually enlarges it. Kaya din spiritual appetite natin, Lord, bless me. Lord, anoint me. Make me fruitful. Mas lumalawak na. God, I want to be useful to you. But more than that, I want you. I want to be close to you, God. Lord, more than umaman ako, sumikat ako, makapasa ako, makaasawa ako, or whatever. Lord, I want to be close to you. Gina-enlarge po niya. Yun po ang value ng prayer if we pray properly and our lives are changed as a result. Matthew 26, 39, going a little farther, he threw himself down with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, to Jesus, pray to if possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but what you will. Sa prayer life ni Jesus, napalapit talaga siya sa Father. In a time of trial, hindi niya hiningi na yung madali. Hiningi niya ano yung makibigay saya sa Father in heaven. Nababag, nabago siya. Gusto ni Lord, mabago din tayo. Amen? Amen. Palapakan mo natin si Lord sandali.
Can we have the musicians now? Let's go to the third and the last point. Mabilis lang po ito. Prayer transforms me by making my ministry godly. Pwede ba ang ministry hindi godly? Pwedeng pwede. <laughs> Pwedeng pwede. Abusado, sinungaling, manipulative, kawatan, whatever. You can be in ministry but ungodly. And your ministry can be ungodly. Ayaw natin ganon kasi sinilinuloko natin. Kita ni Lord lahat, di ba? Okay? So, God, we want to be godly. However, ano ang paraan? It is through prayer. How then can we keep a ministry godly? The secret is in a godly life cultivated through prayer. And this we understand, kailangan natin talaga si Lord. We have absolutely nothing in and of ourselves to generate true godliness. To think otherwise is to be spiritually blind. We need God. So kailangan natin si Lord. Kailangan natin ng power ni Lord. Kailangan natin ng Holy Spirit. Dito, the Holy Spirit is super duper important. Grabe, kaipatate ng Holy Spirit. And may we really pursue Him because Siya talaga yung importante sa ating mga buhay. Without help from on high, we can say our prayers, but we cannot pray our prayers. Surya lang ta, pero wala gyo'y nabago. And prayer nourishes a spiritual life that is deep in God and enriched in Him for this is prayer's highest significance. Okay? So ultimately, yung prayer, lalalim tayo sa pagkakilala kay Lord, lalalim ang ating relationship with God, ang ating friendship with God, nananourish yung ating soul. And then we're satisfied, then we're not irritable, we're not envious, then we're not impatient, then di ta palaway or whatever, because God uh, in His grace has changed us through the prayer process. Last slide, the Lord has designed prayer to be a life-transforming habit. May you and I accept God's invitation and draw closer to Him through the regular practice of biblical and spirit-empowered prayer. Sana po ating mga buhay maging mas prayerful ngayong 2024 para hindi lang tayo blessed sa mga material o ibang mga bagay but we are blessed because this year we know God more than ever before. That's my wish for myself, my wish for you. Sana 2024, when it's over and we evaluate December, last week of December, 2024, we evaluate the year, say, praise God, naka-kwarta po ko, naka-asawa ko, naka-promote ko, nag-graduate na yun ko, naman ako masteral, etc. Marbabal na bago ko. How beautiful it that is. And yun talaga, you can end it and say, panalo ako sa 2024. Panalo ako. Thank you, Lord, because my prayer transformed me. Ayun ho ang goal natin. Amen? Palabakan natin si Lord. Thank you, God. Can we all stand and pray? And those joining us online, please pray with us as well. Join us in prayer today. Come on, let's all pray. Father in heaven, salamat Lord God for reminding us today. Lord, you want us to pray. But let us pray any kind of prayer, any way of praying, but to pray in ways that change or transform us. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, ma-apply yung mga natutunan namin. Help us. In Jesus' name. Right now, whatever you heard, na kinausap ka ni Lord, kinunbig ka Lord, in-encourage ka ni Lord, pinaintindi ni Lord sa'yo, respond to God right now. Can we all just talk to God and respond to God in the next few moments, even those joining us online. Lord, I'm sorry, God, that I've been praying so hurriedly. Masyada ako nagmamadali, Lord. Sorry, God, prayer is just a, a, a chore, oh God. Chore, parang obligasyon lang. Sorry, Lord. And Lord, sorry, God, that hindi talaga ako nag- Linger sa you, Lord God. Like develop ng closeness sa you, Lord, through prayer. It's just more of a genie in a bottle. Bless mo ko. Believe, became pa to sa akin, Lord, etc. Lord, I'm sorry, God. Today, I want to say I want to draw closer to you. Come on, pray to the Lord. Gusto ko pong mapalapit sa iyo, Panginoon. That, Lord, when my prayer is done, I'm changed. And therefore, it's a, it's a good prayer. So God, help me. Help us, Lord. Come on, pray to the Lord. Respond to God. Whatever you heard today, respond to God. Lord, help us to be godly through prayer, to be empowered by prayer, to be drawn closer to you through prayer. And Lord, just Lord, having the right posture of the heart, the right attitude. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, keep praying to the Lord. I want to talk to those who have not yet surrendered their lives to the Lord. God is calling you. Tell Him today, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know my life is not right. Lord, forgive me of my sins, God. My selfishness, my pride, my rebellion, Lord. 
Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon, sa aking mga kasalanan. The wrong things I do. The wrong attitudes in my life. My selfish orientation, God. I'm not living for you. I'm living for myself. And I'm proud of my religion and good works. Forgive me, Lord. Come on, pray to the Lord. If that's you, you know, you need to pray that prayer. You know, you need to give your life to the Lord. You need, you need to make your life right with God. Come on, pray to the Lord. God, I need you. Jesus, please forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need you, Lord. I'm selfish. I'm immoral. I'm proud. I'm a liar, etc. I'm a thief. Lord, forgive me, God. In Jesus' name. Patawarin mo ako. Baguhin mo ako, Panginoon. Change me, God. Come on, give your life to God. This is the most important thing. Bigay mong buhay mo ko rin. Ito ang prayer, the pinaka-priority at the very start of the journey. Dapat clear ito sa'yo. So Lord God, come and forgive us. Come and change us, God, we pray. Salamat, Lord God. Salamat, Lord.